All right, today I'm gonna go over squad car wiring. This is obviously the most simple way. You got a little fuse block. You know, you just run your power to that stud and you run, power your items off of that. Make it a little more uh, user friendly. You can put a charge guard in. This, though it looks complicated, it's actually pretty simple. You got battery goes in, the power goes out, you got ignition feed there, you got a ground, <clears throat> and this is basically a timer. It's got a little thing in there you can set uh, time. So when it gets ignition, that's when it clicks a little relay in there and then it sends the power out. And then after it loses ignition, it counts down and then it shuts off after a preset amount of time. And there's other features to it too, but uh, that's the basics of it. Then if you want to move from there, this has no timer though. But again, you could wire this into it and use the ignition feeds as a timer through this. But basically this is made from Blue Sea Systems. Uh, we actually got this one from Kerr, they sell them. But I mean, a couple different companies sell the same looking box under different names. But this box, it'll take 100 amps. You got uh, six ignitions, six battery plus, and 12 grounds. So, I mean, that, that works as a pretty good option. And like I said, you can, uh, instead of having ignition go in here, because how the ignition works is you hook an ignition into there, and then it, uh, you can feed off of these. And you could use a timer instead of the ignition, and then you'd have timed outlets. And this will take up to 30 amp fuse per circuit, 100 amp max for the box. These are 30 amp fuses per circuit and I'd have to look it up I can't remember the complete rating on the box and this charge guard which is made by Havis company uh, they uh, are rated for like 30 amps okay then the next thing this is made by Kerr uh, this box rated at 100 amps uh, this thing has five battery plus five ignition three timed circuits and eight grounds so you have your time circuits right here and what's cool is you can adjust the times individually right here and then these are the ignition circuits on that side and then these are the battery hot and then these are your grounds up here and then where these go in this would be battery plus this would be the ignition power and this would be ground. <clears throat> the only thing that's, or did I do that backwards? Uh, no, that's that's right, that's right. Because this is ground, this is ignition. This says ground here, but it's meaning, uh, meaning these screws right here. So battery, ignition, ground. The only thing that I don't like is on the ignition, it's like a feed, it's not like a, like a timer you get all your juice to feed the ignition circuits come into this stud so you got to use like a like a relay if you want to because you know say you want to have six two 30 amp circuits well you got to have 60 amps or whatever coming in here so that's the only pitfall of this one but otherwise it's a solid unit now this, this unit here, this is made from DNR Electronics and I like to use this unit because of some of the other equipment we use. But this unit here, it has what? Eight battery plus, eight ignition, and eight timer outlets, and then seven grounds, and then as a bonus, how this thing works you go in you got your you run your battery into there Okay, and then you run your main ground into there And then it's got two 50 amp outlets here and then two ground outlets so these two fuses 
power these two outlets here which works handy because like if you use like Whelan products like say the Whelan Sencom Sapphire that thing requires two 50 amp inlets going into it so I almost think this is what this is made for is for powering that kind of product so basically I can just run my two leads from my Sencom directly to here and they're fused at 50 amps and before I uh, I always put a uh, 100 amp circuit breaker going in to this I'll come from the battery I'll go to this and then I run over to this and then if I hook all the squad car wiring through here if I want to isolate and shut off all the squad car equipment basically it's simple as the push of a button on the circuit breaker okay and the timers on here there's some different options it's all pretty self-explanatory you flip a couple toggles and you change change the timing but uh yeah this is the one we like to use just for ease of install and the eight grounds if that bothers you with these two big ground outlets down here you can run uh, little tails off. You know, you have, say, put three wires and a ring connector, have them come off, and then put like a spade connector on them. So when you come with your grounds, you just plug them right into the little spade connector. Okay, and then what else? Uh, if this thing had a downfall, it's right there. Max 20 amp fuse. So you have some things that that definitely take more than 20 amps you know there's a lot of stuff like some of the radios are like 25 amps or 30 amps but as technology improves those amps are going down and how we do that is sometimes like right off of here i'll run a just a little a wire with with a fuse in it uh, we buy them from our electronic supply. It's just got the wire and then it's got the fuse built in. And we run that right off of there. But you do lose the aspect of, unless you use a relay, you lose the aspect of being able to run that stuff on a timer. But there isn't really too much that uses that much juice that you would need to put on the timer. Because like a lot of radios, uh, computer systems, stuff like that, they're they all run uh, they got to be battery hot and like a lot of them will say you want you to connect like directly to the battery to reduce interference well we've never had any issues with with that so and we usually mount this in the trunk or in the back area of the vehicle just because it's the only place we have space so i just wanted to go over a couple of the options on what we use for wiring squad cars up all right